All right, the next part we're gonna do is add some binding. Just this little plastic binding. This will be around the outside trim, both the top and the bottom. And before we do that, it'd be a good idea just to double check that everything's been sanded nice and smooth and flat, especially where you put that little end wedge here. If it sticks up a little bit or anywhere, do a quick little sanding on that, make it all smooth. Then we're gonna take this little router and I've got a bit in here that is the exact size of that binding that we're gonna do. It's got a ball bearing on there that's gonna rub. Don't change any setting on this. I've got it set up exactly where it needs to go, but this will be able to cut that little recess for our binding to fit into. And then we'll get that glued on. this router here again just make sure that little ball bearing will rub on the outside all the way around keep it flat you don't want this thing to tip on you and twist so just keep it nice and tight go around the entire outside and we'll flip it over and get the, the bottom part as well the only part you have to be aware of and be tricky with is is the little mortise right here because you don't want that ball bearing to dip down into the mortise at all then it's going to dig in, especially on this part here. So I made a little uh, block of wood that'll just fit right in there. And this will make it so the ball bearing will just rub right over. If you want, you can just take a little piece of tape and tape that in there so it doesn't move. And then when you're cutting that little notch, it'll just fit right over top of that. So that's a little helpful, or you just really careful as you're cutting this top and bottom part here. But we'll get that little piece in and we're gonna do our little cutaway on both sides on this. Just kind of inspect it and make sure that it's a good depth all the way around the entire thing. And then this little black binding again, like I said, is just going to fit perfectly right into those little cutaways there. And we'll get that glued in, taped on. We're going to get both sides. Pretty good. Again, just make sure it's a good depth all the way around. If you need to, you can always run it again. It's not gonna take more off than it needs to. Uh, I went ahead and took out the little piece here. And when we go to attach this binding, we're just gonna use some super glue. I've got some of this here. You could also just use some epoxy uh, to glue this on. Uh, the super glue works well. Uh, get some gloves for sure, because you get any super glue on your fingers, you don't want to glue those together. And you don't need a lot of super glue. You're just going to do a little bit at a time. So we'll put a little bit of glue in the slot. And then we'll start up here right next to the mortise. And we're going to get that in there. And we'll get some tape. And I've just laid out a whole bunch of strips of pre-cut uh, off pieces. So you can just grab them, tape it on, and then you get a little bit of glue in the next spot bend it down, tape it on, just make your way around the entire thing. Some little suggestions here. Uh, the hardest part is probably the inside part right here. So as you get going around, make sure it stays really tight, especially on this inside. Well, oftentimes people don't put enough pressure and there's a little gap here. So you gotta make sure that it's really tight when you go to glue that on and tape it. Um, just get it all nice and tight glued on. And then at the end here, you're going to have some extra. This is way longer than what we need. So once we get all the way around, we'll just kind of take some scissors and trim it when we go to cut that last little part off. So take your time. Make sure it's on there really well. You don't want to have a ton of glue squeeze out. And we'll just start with a little bit of glue and then get that glue so it's spread and covered 
in that whole track there. You don't want it squeezing out everywhere majorly, but you do want good coverage. And we just work our way a little bit at a time over the entire thing. I have this real tight. It's not gonna move on us. Make sure you have plenty of time before you start this process. It's gonna be pretty tedious and it's gonna take quite some time. So uh, you gotta have plenty of time before you start. And just take your glue and just add a little bit more glue as we go around. Don't want it squeezing out everywhere, but you do want good coverage. I make sure the tape is covering everything and it's pulled really tight. So I'm going to just basically line the entire thing with tape. The super glue is pretty potent stuff, so be careful not to breathe it in too much. Especially in this inner part right here, get it really tight. Again, on this inside curve, this is probably the most crucial part that you keep it really tight so there's no gap. When I put the glue in here, I'm not just putting a bead and letting it, I'm kind of spreading it with the, the tip of the glue bottle. Just kind of spreading it so it gets a good coverage everywhere. I just don't want it to be squeezing out so much as dripping everywhere. But I'm going to be making sure this is really tight, no gap. Right here, there sometimes gets a gap, so I get that really tight when I go to take this. And when we get close to the end here, you just take some scissors or something and just trim right where it's going to be connecting to that mortise. And your neck's going to cover up a lot of this. And so if you're a little short or whatever, it'll still work out. I try to get it right on. And again, make sure it's taped real tight. You don't want it sticking up at all. So you're going to have to put a decent amount of tape real tight and let this dry. We want to do both sides. So again, just make sure you have enough time before you get started. And again, it's very helpful to lay out a whole bunch of tape, strips, so now we can get the other side on here. Now when you do this, again, make sure you start where the mortise is at. That's where you want to have that start. This is going to butt together. Again, your neck's going to cover that joint up. You want a nice continuous flow all the way around the whole thing so it'll come together where it gets covered up later. Just work your way around. And on this one, you want it really tight in the center joint. And you don't want to put so much glue it's going to drip out everywhere, but you do want it to cover the whole section.
All right, let this dry for quite some time to let that super glue fully dry. And then you'll take all the tape off and it might be kind of tricky. Some of the tape might be glued on a little bit. You can get off the best you can. And we'll do some sanding to this. We also have a little scraper that can scrape off some things. And then we'll get some of our final sanding done to the body. So we're making progress. Okay, once the glue's been dry for quite some time, go ahead and take all of the tape off. Um, and it might be a little bit tricky. There might be some spots of the tape that the glue kind of just sticks to it really well. So if you don't get 100% of the tape off, that's okay, because we can do some sanding, scraping of this, get all the little scraps of tape off. So take a little time and get as much of that tape off as you can. Man, this process of getting all this tape off, it was kind of a hassle. And as you can see, I couldn't get all of it off very well. And that's okay if you don't get 100% of it off, because we're gonna be able to sand all this tape off. And I also have a little scraper that we can use that will help scrape off some of this tape here. So this can be used to scrape some of that tape off or we'll sand it. You gotta be very careful that we don't ruin the binding, especially while sanding, as this will heat up while you're sanding and this is plastic and it can easily melt it if you hit the same spot for too long. So take your time, but we're gonna get all the tape off. There's sometimes little glue smudges for our fingerprints. I got some super glue smudges on here, but let's take some time and get the whole thing cleaned up really nice now. So with a scraper, it's got one edge that has a little burr on it. So you wanna make sure you're scraping with that burr. I also tweak it just a little bit. I put a little bit of pressure on the inside. The thumbs with the pressure, just to get a little pressure. Clean this up with the sand. I, I would recommend 150 grit sandpaper to remove a lot of this tape and the glue a lot faster. time with it if you still have some little spots that are a little dark from the glue we want to get all those off um, make sure you get everything off cleaned up really well and like I said be careful as you do the outside with the binding that we don't melt the binding too much I'm gonna put it in my bench vise for the rest of this stuff here <laughs> Go ahead and get that whole outside, front, back, everything all cleaned up. Okay, when you've got all that tape off and sand and everything, do a really good job getting all the little glue smudges off. We're gonna go ahead and do our final, final sanding to the body. Later on, all we have to do is attach the neck, our bridge here later, uh, the saddle, basically anything that needs to be glued on later, we need to have this all sanded fully. Now I'm looking at this and it looks pretty good, except I'm looking really picky. I've got some, still a little bit of glue smudges here and here, a little bit in here. I'm looking on the edges here. Looks pretty good. However, I do want to get those little glue smudges. 
Same thing on the back. I've got a little glue smudge, a little darker spots. You want to get all that. And let's go ahead and sand this all the way up to 220 grit sandpaper. Make it look really nice. <laughs> that out to 220. When you do the 220 grit, it doesn't take as long. You're just going to go really quickly over the whole surface, everything. Just smooth it up. carpet or something like that. That uh, the body is now done. We're going to now focus on the neck. 